welcome back. And we are at Cafe Latte Chat and today we are talking about landslides and slopes and how far we've come. So we were discussing about uh, the biggest challenges in trying to come up with an efficient, safe system for you know slope management as well as uh, maintenance. Um, so Eriko, you'd like to enlighten us a bit about, uh, from a resident point of view, uh, what, what's awareness, you know, is it very hard to create awareness and teach people how to look out for signs? Uh, yes and no. Um, we find that we get the best response from people who actually have um, experienced a landslide. So for example, like in Bukit Antara Bangsa, we get, of course, really good response. Um, and so you have to sort of um, perhaps um, experience it, go through it yourself in order to realize that uh, this is really important and all that. So when we have, um, what Slope Watch does is um, we do two things. We, um, we do sort of, um, we do a bunch of series of community talks. So we would have like a road show of community talks whereby we teach people, um, we teach people about landslides or slopes in general, how are slopes made, um, what causes landslides and you know who's responsible and all that. And that's what we call the learning part about it. Because in order, before you start monitoring, you should have some knowledge. You should know a bit about uh, the subject. And then we teach them on the signs. So that's the monitoring part, where we teach them the signs of, um, of, um, of slope failure before they happen. And then the other one is, OK, so you've seen it and you report it. Then, but then there's also simple measures that laymen can take. We don't have to wait for geotech engineers and they do the fixing. There are um, maintenance um, schedules for specialized engineering solutions or maintenance, but um, there's also things that people can do on a regular basis like cleaning your drains because water seems to be one of the major problems that sort of lead to erosion and um, things like that. So um, it's um, so that's what we do. And then the other um, thing that we do is we teach residents how to report to the local authority in a way that they can then act upon it and um, get to the site. So we teach the residents. Okay, if you see, if you're, if you're, if people within your town sees um, signs of landslides, don't let 20 people jam up their jam up their phone lines with 20 phone calls. Mm -hmm appoint one person who is fairly knowledgeable also <coughs> like you don't want to call up MPAJ Zuffrel department for a tree that just um, got hit by lightning and it's you know it fell over and um, you want to make sure that it's a qualified report mm -hmm. and so that person who's in charge we sort of tell them okay here are 20 l here's a list of 20 signs of landslides out of this, number five is the most important. You call him even if it's, you know, <coughs> even if it's off, off um, office hours, you give him a call because it's quite urgent. Mm -hmm. Then the next 10 is sort of medium to serious and then so on and so forth. So they know. So um, we teach the residents to do that. And, and then they, they sort of organize a point within themselves, a person to, you know, send the report. And so that's the other thing that we do is mm -hmm. teach them about report submission and case management. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. You, you guys have quite a lot of uh, pamphlets and all teaching people. But um, Jaffa, I understand lately that uh, MPJ has been having a bit of problems getting funds from the uh, state government to fix your slopes because it's in the terms of loan with interest and all this kind of things also. Um, what is this, this challenge? Is this a challenge for you all, you know, getting money now to fix slopes and all? We, we do consider we don't consider that as a challenge because uh, it is part of our routine daily works but when we talk about slope safety it involve uh, for me it involve three different phase first pre development phase construction phase and um, maintenance phase after the slope uh, developed by the developer so they will surrender it to MPAG or other local authority so the local authority will uh, do the maintenance part of it uh, for probably at the end of years for some time. Mm -hmm. So um, in this case, when we uh, talk about challenge slope issues, so it involves these three, of course, three dif different phases. So at the first phase, uh, during the development phase, so we have to uh, 
scrutinized or detailed uh, checking on the drawings submitted by the developer and the consultants. So this is uh, quite a challenge uh, for us as well because it is only on paper being presented uh, all definitely on a piece of paper. So we have to uh, have the imagination how it looks after it will be completed after two or three years. So during the construction, we have to make sure this uh, development or construction proposed by the developer is according to our approved plan. So it is also part of uh, another challenge. And then the third one is the uh, maintenance phase, as what you have mentioned just now. Um, fund is a part of it, definitely. Of course, uh, the fund is not enough for local authority to, to do the one-off to stabilize the slope and to do the maintenance work over the years. So uh, our culture to develop a certain or to construct certain uh, slope stabilization works is quite easy. But it, when we talk about uh, maintenance, it, so it, there's no fund allocated for, for that. So we are having that issue as well. So we are lucky once we are having this issue, we ask fund from the state government and then the state government willing to assist us with that fund. Even it is, uh, as what you mentioned, it is on interest, but we still have to uh, stabilize it for the safety of the resident. Well, of course, we hope that it doesn't increase our assessment rates. <laughs> <but> <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what do you think, right, you know, based on all that's happened and everything, how, how can we improve? What, what's the next step for, for us? from this point onwards. Um, perhaps, uh, Reza, you'd like to start off? Our ministry feel that the first step is always important, which is the planning step, planning step. No? Before we have any slope, we have to plan first. That's why our guideline is called this uh, you know, guideline on the planning of uh, development on his side areas. Because we everything starts from the planning stage. You know, So in fact, in our guideline, we divided slope into four, four groups, you know, the first Class, I would say class, uh, four class, class one, two, three, and four. So we give a guideline to everybody. There are certain type of slope that sh maybe should not be touched because it is sensitive and it can be detrimental. So uh, that is probably uh, class four, okay? Because, uh, you know, if we know which type of slope or which type of his type is sensitive, it's best to avoid it, not to develop in that area. Maybe we have to find another place. So that is the first step. Of course, if there's no s no choice, because we understand that in urban areas, sometimes space is a big constraint. We don't have much, much choice, but we have to take extra precaution. That's why in our guideline also clearly stated, you if there needs to be development in his side areas, we need a second opinion to actually counter check and all that. Okay, It's just like taking food. We all know that oily food is bad, but sometimes it's difficult to just stop taking that type of food. Maybe we can reduce taking oily food, maybe take medication. The same approach probably is on his side development and slope development you know we can go uh, develop plan for it but there must be extra precaution for example getting a second opinion on it and doing a proper survey identifying the slope know what you are dealing with so that you can take the extra measures maybe through the consultant the designers to actually design based on the what the slope that we have we are facing that if we do it correctly during the planning stage hopefully we have uh, less problem along the way during maintenance, during construction, and during operational. So, so this does it is mean what we need to refine our guidelines some more? Or no, uh, we believe our guideline is there. Mm. We already classify slope into four classes. We give recommendations which are you know that can be done, which sh should be avoided if possible, unless for a certain type of development. So the classification are there in our guidelines. You know, so that's how we approach the first step, the planning step first. No, if we tackle the planning step, hopefully it will reduce the construction stage, the maintenance stage, and what comes later after the planning stage. I tell you what, I will hear um, the rest of your opinions on what more we can do about this this system of ours um, in the next segment. Um, we'd like to take a short break right now. <laughs>